Hello, I'm EpiX Toycat, and today I'm going to be sharing 17 interesting things you might not have known about the Caves and Cliffs Part 1 update. This is a very quirky update because of the fact that they had to release it on short notice and split the cave update into two, and it means that there are some very interesting things regarding block rarities, regarding armor that works better than you might expect it does, and also all of the other weird things that they've released, and so I wanted to share 17 of those today because it's 1.17. Yes, I know it's very clever, but I hope you all enjoy this video. If you want to subscribe with notifications on, then you'll see more of these videos when they come out about 1.17, 1.18, and beyond. So with that said, let's talk about something you should know about this update already. Amethyst geodes exist in the ground and bring four brand new blocks to the game. Smooth basalt, calcite, amethyst blocks, and then of course there's budding amethyst. You should know by now that there is no way to move budding amethyst around your world. If you break it, it's like a mob spawner. It just breaks and is gone. Um, but you should also know that you can take any of those other three blocks with you, but smooth basalt and amethyst are both renewable blocks. Also, what a wonderful sound it makes when you punch it. But both of these blocks are renewable, whereas calcite is not renewable. This means that the only way to find calcite is through natural generation, whereas smooth basalt, you can obviously uh, furnace up some basalt, and amethyst blocks can be made from amethyst crystals. Uh, you can only get calcite by natural generation, and because amethyst geodes are so rare, that is a genuine problem. So that means that calcite is one of the rarest blocks in Minecraft, and it's not even a particularly pretty block for that. I mean, it's white, so that's nice, I guess. Uh, but the texture isn't great and everything else is terrible. But it is one of Minecraft's rarest blocks, at least right now, until they make it renewable, presumably at some point in the future. Uh, speaking of things you can presume at some point in the future, finding these is a lot easier than you might expect because amethyst geodes can be found on the surface of most oceans. And in case even that is too much effort for you, did you know all you have to do is go onto Chunk Base and there is a finder that can help you do them for any seed if you don't mind using uh, third party tools. If you do mind using third party tools, Maybe what you find more interesting is the fact that amethyst, uh, you know, budding amethyst should not be mined. Again, it is one of those uh, few blocks in Minecraft that no matter what you do, whether you've got a diamond pickaxe with fil for <laughs> fortune, silk touch, whatever you've got, there is no way to get this back. And even more tragic than that, uh, when you mine the budding amethyst, you get literally nothing. You don't just get like a regular amethyst block. You just get, uh, again, like a zero because the block has to exist where it spawns naturally. There are very few blocks like this in Minecraft. And the goal is that you should travel to find your amethyst geodes once you do. But the other interesting thing you might not have known is that regular amethyst things, the thing that grow on these, uh, can be placed down and also have these delightful sounds when you walk over them. So if you want to make a staircase that has a really nice noise as you walk up and down it, did you know you can do that using the amethyst that grows from budding amethyst. As you can see, it grows all over the place, everywhere. It's very nice. Speaking of things that are very nice, I bet you didn't know uh, that copper is a very nice block. Okay, you might have known that, but you might not have known that it can't be mined of a wooden pickaxe because working out where copper is on the tier list of bores is very hard to do because it's about as common as coal, but like, is it better than coal or worse than coal? Unlike coal though, you cannot mine uh, you know, uh, copper with a wooden pickaxe. So I would put it, if you're doing a you know ore tier list, which is pretty straight forward for every other ore. I'd put it somewhere between coal and iron as far as what you're going to do with it. Obviously, you can't use it for tools, and so it's only a decorative block. And here's the interesting thing. Because it's only a decorative block, uh, which, by the way, you can't mine with gold uh, either. Even though it mines faster, you can't actually get copper from it. Because it's a decorative block, I recommend not working with it until you can get a fortune en uh, enchantment. Because if you have the fortune enchantment, you can get so many pieces of copper. It's one to three uh, copper by default, but because fortune gives each of those three copper a chance to go up to four uh, times, you can actually get up to 12 copper uh, for every single block mine. This is nine copper. That's a, uh, you know, that's a block fan right there. But if we mine again, we're going to get ourselves, oh, what's this? Nine copper. And if we mine again, we're going to get ourselves this time free copper. It's a, there's a lot of different things. So uh, did you know, uh, also in this update, you should know, but just real quick, did you know fortune is extra good in this update because it now works for iron and for gold. When you mine gold, you'll get up to four raw gold. When you mine iron, you'll get up to four raw iron. It's very fun, but it's not as fun as getting up to 12 copper every single time you mine it with fortune free. And so that is something I wanted to share because it's very delightful. You get so much raw copper, it's genuinely a problem. We're just gonna throw it away. That's how that's how much we have, huh? And so we're gonna move into the next fun fact here. Here's another thing you might not have known. Goats are an incredibly useful mob. Wait, sorry, I misread. 
Uh, goats are not a very useful mob. In fact, goats literally have no uses, was what I went into this, uh, you know, trying to disprove. I was like, what uses do you have for goats? One, they're cute. I mean, that's something. And two, technically you can breed goats with wheat, and when you breed them, you'll get some amount of experience, as you'll see. So you can use goats to make an XP farm, you can use goats to be cute, but otherwise they have literally zero uses right now, which is why it's so confusing that they're making them the centerpiece of this update. Goats don't have a use until 1.18 when the goat horn will be coming to the game so it might be worth keeping them now for later but if you're so yeah again if you're put off by how useless goats are don't worry in the future there's a goat horn which has uh, theorized uses again just to throw off some random theories it could be used uh, as a thing to help fight the warden is one of the theories but we won't know until 1.18 and you also can't get the goat horn till then so get a couple of goats Breed them, make a goat farm if you really want to, uh, because at some point they will be useful, but now is not that point, unlike most mobs where it's just not useful ever, now or the future. Speaking of things that aren't useful in now or the future, um, these dripstone leaves are really useful for parkour for your friends, but you wouldn't really ever use them by yourself, right, because they, they fall down. But something you might not have known is the fact that if you put redstone power into them, just like this, they will never fall down. This is one of those really weird interactions when you think about it, right? Like, wait. You can use redstone with leaves. So let you if you if you redstone power the leaves, they don't fall. Yes, that's correct. Just to show you it's not like slightly longer. Here is me standing on the leaf and it works infinitely. Because hey, did you know redstone and nature now interact in another way uh, that is very, very bizarre if you ask me. But again, I, I like the weird but quirky facts like this. Maybe you do too. So did you know that the azalea tree is one of the weird hybrids in Minecraft? Because it's a cross between a tree and a flower. It's kind of like a tree in that when you grow it up, it has logs and then it has leaves. Which, by the way, interesting fact about those logs and leaves. Um, the logs are just oak log leaves, which means this is the first tree in Minecraft we've ever seen that doesn't have its own logs. In case you don't believe me on that one, you're like, you know, no way, it's actually an azalea log I think you'll find. No, as you can see, I just picked up an oak log right there and I'm going to put it right back because it, well, that's all it is. But the interesting thing about azalea trees is they're also the first tree to have two different types of leaves. So zero different types of logs but two unique types of leaves, the azalea leaves, which don't look hugely unique, uh, but the one I really like is the flowering azalea leaves. This is a very interesting and very unique block that I like. So yeah, grow some azalea trees and use it for the uh, the flowers, I guess. Also, um, as mentioned right here, if you grow azalea trees, it will turn the dirt below it into rooted dirt. You know, this is so many fun facts combined in one. The azalea tree is such a weird tree because it also works as a flower for bees. If you place these down, as you can see, they've pollinated and they've made honey and as you can see, if I'm a little bit uh, naughty right here, I can, oh, okay, there we go. I can make all the bees angry with me as well because they don't like that. They they enjoy pa pollinating their honey. They don't enjoy strangers coming in and telling them what to do. Speaking of things uh, that strangers shouldn't come in and tell them what to do, me with the Mojang stuff. I'll admit that, uh, you know, the glowberry is a very useless item. I'll give you a list of glowberry uses right now. You can eat them and they're a very substandard food. You can feed them to foxes and they're a substandard way to feed foxes. But I guess the main reason you'd want to is if you're in a cave anyway, right? And the only way to find them in 1.17 is via these mineshaft chests. Later, it'll be available, uh, you know, in lush caves. But you can place them down, and the delightful thing about placing them down and then bone milling them is you can make light sources on vines that you can climb. It is a light sourceable vine. Um, but the honest, honestly, the real reason that most of you care about them is they're one of Minecraft's easiest blocks to farm. You place them in the ceiling. I could find a higher ceiling, maybe. Uh, you place them in the ceiling, and then you wait, and then more glowberry uh, leaves, or it's called a cave vine when you place it down, grow, and then you're good to go. It's very, very, very delightful. Delightful. Um, and I'll see you can also just do it like this and wow look at that now when we when we left uh, You know trigger them or right click them We get a whole ton more glowberries which we can place down which we can then bone mill and then we left trigger those or right click those We get more glowberries and so on and so forth It's a very fun item to farm if you think that Minecraft needs more easy farming techniques Which I would be inclined to agree. It's always fun to farm glowberries are one of the easiest ways to do that Speaking of things that are easy tinted glass so tinted glass is very counterintuitive, and again, this feels weird to do, 
Uh, so again, you can trust me that this is okay. But did you know breaking glass of your fist or really breaking glass of anything besides a silk touch pickaxe won't retrieve that glass back? Just to show you, this is black stained glass. You can also see looking at the floor, this blocks light in a way this one doesn't. But if we break glass with our fist or even with just a regular pickaxe, did you know we won't get the glass back? This is obviously expected, but tinted glass is different. If you break tinted glass with a silk touch pickaxe, of course you'll get it back like normal, but you can also break uh, tinted glass with just a default non-enchanted pickaxe and you'll get the tinted glass black, uh, back. But even better than that, if you break the tinted glass with your fist, you get tinted glass back. I can't say I understand why that's true, but I really do enjoy that there is this weird quirky uh, glass block that breaks the rules and you can confuse your friends by making some glass blocks which are breakable and some which aren't because black stained glass looks a lot like it. I might have even made that mistake earlier. Anyway, with that said, speaking of mistakes, um, one of the greatest features in this update is powdered snow. Powdered snow actually started as snowier snow. That was the name until they realized it was the same as powdered snow. That is a true story. And so one of the interesting things you can do with powdered snow is because it looks so much like regular snow, it's just got this slightly different texture. You can make secret bases in mountains now that are very hard to find, that don't require a ton of redstone. They just require a few of these blocks because as you can see, you fall through it and there's no way to really tell Hell, that it's underground, right? Very nice. However, what you might not know is the fact that zombies uh, and other mobs can be trapped in there as well. And also another weird thing is if an animal is on fire, yourself included, and it touches snowier snow, it will of course uh, burn the snowier snow away. It's very, very, very strange in my opinion, but it's a thing that exists that I figured you should know about. But yeah, I guess I'm just trapped in my base now. There's no way out besides to stack myself out, except maybe, just maybe, there can be secret ways within the base too. Did you notice this wall when we walked in? If you didn't, then it's working because it's a secret way to access the outside of the base. Again, a second secret entrance. This one's obviously much more noticeable from the outside. But yeah, the fact that you might be able to run across uh, snowy or snow, you know, like you don't know for sure uh, if, if instinctively is very, very cool. Another thing that's very, very cool is this room made from copper. As you can see, there's copper, there's acacia wood, and there's even a delightful staircase. I really do like this one. It's another use for tinted glass. By the way, you can tell it's tinted glass because when you break it with your fist, it drops itself. Um, but if we go to the nether, which always requires a gold helmet, safety first after all, I can show you the next fun fact. Because these are piglins. Have you heard of them? They came in 1.16 and they don't like that I'm eating such a terrible source of food. Uh, what they also don't like, interestingly enough, is the fact that if you mine raw gold blocks near them, they will be upset. So I don't know why they're already upset with me, but just to prove a point, if I break this, they're going to get especially mad. You you know what? It wasn't very clear. Let's try this again. Let's break the raw gold. As you can see, that makes them all very mad because even though this is a brand new block, it is made from gold and piglins believe they own all the gold in the world. So when you break it, they get very mad. An interesting thing though, because raw gold is very similar to gold. Again, you can just smelt raw gold straight up into gold. Um, but even though this is true and this is correct, if you give raw gold uh, to a piglin, like we're going to do right now, uh, even if you give them this raw gold, they won't trade with you for it. They'll just take it. They'll look at it for a few seconds and be like, yeah, that's mine. And I don't understand why. What, what can a piglin tell the difference between smelted gold and raw gold? They shouldn't be able to, but yet they can. And it's very rude of them not to trade things with you. You know what else is rude of them? If you give them a whole block of raw gold. This is nine times as much gold as a gold ingot. But if you give them a whole block of raw gold and you're like, yeah, would you like to try this out? What they'll do is the same thing. Like, ooh, this is interesting. Let me look at this. Should I trade this with you? And then they all simultaneously decide, actually, no, I'll just keep this. And that is rude. That is not how trading should work. Before we go back to the other world, allow me to show you another fun fact. Okay, this is a weird one, I'll admit. But did you know that the item frame or the glow item frame of the two variants now um, are exactly identical besides the glow item frame puts off light. Except that's not actually true. Despite the glow item frame seeming to glow, it doesn't actually put off a light level. It just has a, I, I think a better pattern and like a perceived light that is much better. And so yeah, if you wanna light things, do not use the glow uh, signs. Also don't use the glow uh, item frames. And you know, what? glow ink doesn't actually make things glow. It just makes them more visible. But what's the difference between light level and visibility? This update really makes you question that with the tinted glass. And uh, you know what? It's a question I'm too qualified or too underqualified to mention right here. Speaking of things I'm too underqualified to mention, did you know that you can place item frames on the side of amethyst uh, clusters? I bet you didn't. Also, did you know that amethyst clusters, they grow in four separate stages and each of those four stages is silk touchable. This is unlike any other crop or growing thing in the game. And uh, 
yeah, it's also, man, this is, this is so strange, huh? The fact that you really can just surround a crystal <laughs> with item frames if you want to. Huh, strange times. And then if you fill those item frames with maps, you can walk into a map block in a way that you can't do in other ways. I've got the whole world in my hands in the most literal sense of that. Only possible in 1.17. Okay, we're back in the beautiful world crafted by Adorable Ho to show you the last few fun facts that bring us to caves. Uh, things that you probably wouldn't have expected about the cave update that have some very interesting weird quirks because did you know, diorite and, um, sorry, diorite generates much more commonly. You're gonna find so much diorite now. You're also gonna find deep slate and tough at lower elevations. And that means that the amount of stone in your Minecraft world has substantially decreased. That's right, stone has become a rarer block in this update. And do you really care about that? Is something you can decide for yourself. Um, it might become a big deal if you wanna make stone bricks, etc. But as you can see, looking around, there is so much non-stone here uh, that finding stone just got a little bit harder. So yeah, did you know stone is now rarer than it was before? If you did know that, did you know that stone-based ores are now rarer than they were before too? The same amount of redstone will generate as before. It's just some of that redstone will be deep slate redstone. And so finding non-deep slate Slate redstone ore or non deep slate diamond ore in particular is going to get rarer. In fact, did you know non deep slate diamond ore after the next update will become one of the rarer blocks in the game? You know, let's not talk about future feature fun facts, but again, I'm, I'm excited for that. Let me instead share a very counterintuitive fact with you because did you know the pumpkin in Minecraft is something you can wear on your head? Wow, are you learning this from the first time from a video here? I hope so. But did you know, even if you have a proper helmet on, you will reduce the amount of damage you take from a stalactite falling on your head, just like this. Uh, so instead of taking more than four, it does four hearts of damage. However, a weird thing about this is if I have a carved pumpkin on my head, which you'd expect to give no uh, you know, uh, damage resistance from something on your head, but it does in fact, as you can see, give some amount of resistance. It actually, I took five hearts there. You know, it's very inconsistent. In my testing, I did two hearts of damage. Here I got five. Why is that the case? Who can be sure? But a fact that you might not have known, you know, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stack myself up there because I, I wanted to share another interesting thing that you might uh, not know is that uh, previously, if you wanted to like make a falling base trap, you had to use anvils, but now all you need is uh, a piston and some dripstone. And as you can see, it's very hard to place dripstone when you've got uh, a <laughs> pumpkin on your head. Okay, as you can see, here is me trying it again. I've got a pumpkin on my head and it does that amount of damage, just one and a half hearts. Honestly, it's making no sense. It feels more like a bug than a feature, but in case you like bugs more than you like features, here is a fun one for you. Pumpkins will reduce the amount of damage you take from falling in a very inconsistent way that doesn't make sense to anyone, but maybe it makes sense to you. Speaking of things that make sense to you, in Minecraft, I have been an advocate forever of not mining your iron or gold ore because they might make it more useful in the future. And I was correct about that one. So allow me to say something right now. Do not take your deep slate ores, or your deep slate blocks as a whole, I should say, and craft them into things until you specifically need them. Leave them in their deep slate form or their cobbled deep slate form because you can craft from deep slate all of these different things, you know, whether it be the deep slate tiles that everyone loves or the, you know, th there's so many fun versions of deep slate, but you can never craft these versions of deep slate back to the regular block itself. Again, it seems kind of intuitive when you say it that way, but basically watch out and never craft things until you need them because in Minecraft, crafting is usually a one-way process, as sad or as happy as you might find that. Speaking of sad and happy things, did you know bone milling moss will replace some of the surrounding blocks? And that is actually a, a crazy fact in my opinion, because if we remove this sign real quick, because the sign is pro 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 prohibiting me from doing so, and then we place down the moss block and then we bone mill it, as you can see, it replaces a lot of the stone around it with different types of uh, you know, moss. And that means that moss is very easily farmable, but also it'll grow some grass on it. So if you remove the grass, you can then bone mill it again and get some of these uh, moss carpets. Moss carpets are a very strange uh, item in my opinion. I don't I don't have amazing uses for them, but you can make a natural falling carpet that makes a funny noise maybe, but they will never replace ores, thank God, unlike current Minecraft bugs that might exist and be a problem. Speaking of current Minecraft bugs, did you know that axolotls aren't a bug, but they're adorable anyway? 
you don't need to be a bug to be adorable, because the 17th fun fact is that axolotls are even more adorable than you think. So if we take ourselves a bunch of drowned spawn eggs and we let them fight some axolotls, because axolotls kill all the other mobs in the sea by default, here is what happens if the uh, drowned does damage to an axolotl. The axolotl will play dead and it gets the regeneration effect temporarily and uh, I'm hoping we can actually... Uh, oh, there we go. This, this should happen, right? When the axolotl takes too much damage, uh, they decide to play dead in the most adorable way. Uh, and I'm... Ooh, look at this. They're so good at fighting, by the way. Like, I, I thought they'd be really weak and you'd need a gang of them to kill anything. But as you can see, no, they just killed two drowns. And the only casualty is this guy, except he's not dead. He's playing dead. He has the regeneration effect, and he's going to play dead until his hearts get all the way back to full. And now he's alive again. Look how cute he is. He's the most adorable little axolotl. Because axolotls are even cuter than you thought is the most important thing you need to know. Because axolotls do have a use. They're kind of like a tameable pet of the sea. And I do like that this update, unlike previous updates that just add a useless mob, uh, basically, uh, this update has three mobs, one of which is the glow squid, so you get a brand new glow ink, which is very fun. One of which is the axolotl, so you get, uh, you know, these super adorable guys. And one of which is the goat, which at least theoretically will be useful in the future. I'm, I'm very excited for three new mobs in an update, and that's why they featured so heavily in the trailer, I guess. They are just super adorable. Look at this, look at this pink guy. Don't you want to be friends with him? You do want to be friends with him, don't you? Of course you do. And that's, that's why he's chilling and existing. Oh, they, they love each other. They're kissing. It's so adorable. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you find any of these things to be useful, then I'd appreciate a like on the video because you don't have to do it, but it's a way of saying that you appreciate this. And uh, if you want to help the YouTube algorithm, type a comment down below. Uh, you can use any unintelligible string of words together if you really want to. Um, and also, I would say that if you subscribe, you'll see more of these videos, including my hardcore live streams, which should be starting not long after this is live. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.